Used to kick it off though with the Bridge Ministry of the CSRA, probably one of those groups I suspect that you do already know about. And so maybe over the course of the next few minutes, you'll really learn more about what goes on under that bridge on 15th Street. Roger Gardner is the pastor, founder of the Bridge Ministry, and he's taken time out of his busy schedule to be here. Roger, thanks for starting this and for all you do. Well, thank you for having me, Brad. You're getting ready for another celebration, another service, if you will, uh, as you do right before Thanksgiving every year. Your big meal's coming up Saturday. This will air on Sunday and Monday, so we'll miss it. But your preparations have been going on for a long time for that, right? Right. Um, actually, all week we've been, well, half the year we've been in preparation for all the things that we'll put together for this Saturday. And uh, we do Thanksgiving celebration the Saturday before every Thanksgiving. And this Saturday we will probably feed around 1,000 people. Uh, tell me about uh, how this came about, uh, why you saw a need to have a ministry and why you decided to do it under a bridge. Uh, well, um, Brad, when I came to the Lord, um, I felt like I wanted to go to the street and help the less fortunate. And I really just started down on Broad Street, just uh, kind of like I'm, I'm still a biker. So, you know, like I was getting on my Harley going downtown and, and uh, just connecting with people that I met that were in, in the condition that I used to live in. Uh, which was not, not a great place to be, and my heart really went for him. So homelessness was on the streets then, and it is today. And, um, and as, I, uh, as, as I learned more of, about them and became familiar with them, um, they weren't strangers anymore. As I saw them in the past, you know, they were kind of an unseen people group that I didn't really want to pay attention to because I felt like I couldn't do anything to help them. I felt like just maybe one person at a time wasn't enough. So it took off, didn't it? And all of a sudden the crowds grew. Well, it, 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 took, a, it took years. Uh, this is our 12th annual Thanksgiving outreach. When we began January the 20th of 2007, we had a handful of volunteers and about 50 real homeless men and women. Not, not many women and children at that time. Um, but we didn't really know what we're, we were doing. We still don't know what we're doing sometimes, <laughs> but we do know who we're following, and that makes a difference. Um, but over the years, uh, people started uh, coming on board to help us when we began the ministry. We could only do like every other Saturday, and be, we didn't have the finances or the, or the volunteers. Mm -hmm. And then after a few years, uh, key churches stepped up to come and help us, and we were able to go every Saturday, and we've been doing that for the last eight years. Is it like a church service with a meal included? Actually, it's very much a church service. Um, the first thing we do is feed, mm -hmm. uh, because if they fall asleep, I can blame it on the food instead yep. of the sermon. <laughs> sure. But we have children's church. We set up 250 chairs. Our average attendance on Saturdays is around 250. Um, and one week we give out uh, clothing. The other week we give out extra food for them to take home with them. Are you able to connect with these people after the service is over, or is that when the volunteers and the churches step in? Um, I think, you know, that's when we, we still uh, do, of course we connect with them. They call our office quite often. Yeah. And uh, so we have benevolence. We have a food pantry. We have a clothing pantry. We have, you know, another group um, that goes out every other Saturday, either into East Boundary or uh, in the neighborhoods off of Broad Street. It's called Adopt-A-Block, and we send a group. There will be a, a, a bridge ministry outreach going on at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. We'll have another group in another vehicle uh, with supplies and clothes and hygiene, actually in another hour t uh, area of town at the same exact time. What's a homeless person look like? Who are they? They're beautiful. <laughs> they, uh, they look like someone that has lost all of their hope, and um, they look like they need help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we cover it up a lot the way we dress and the way we act. Yeah. But they're, they're people. They're actually the, the, the people under the bridge ministry have became our family. We're very close. We're very connected. I have some people um, that are with me today that have been with me since the day I started. They still come under the bridge. What kind of success stories have you seen? People who perhaps once they get the word of God, once they get food and clothing uh, and help that they take off and their lives get on track. We've seen amazing results. You know, like not, you know, um, if you were to put it on, on some type of a percentage, I couldn't say what the percentage is. Um, but we have uh, fabulous stories just uh, over the years. Um, I've, I've had people like stop me at a, at a fast food restaurant and say, hey, you don't remember me? You know, my name is Joe. 
Uh, but he said, I just want to tell you, I came down here, I was addicted to drugs. And he said, I received the Lord, and today I'm married, I have a home, I have a job. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm very successful at what I do. I think one of the, my favorite stories is one time I went to a gas station in a hurry to put air in a tire, and there's this big truck with a trailer behind it with all the lawnmowers. And being the pastor that I am, I wanted to find out who owned it so I could get it moved qu- mm-hmm. quickly. And the guy jumps off the lawnmower, comes, tackles me, and he said, Pastor Roger, Pastor Roger, he said, you don't remember me, but I'm so-and-so. And I said, oh, I'm so glad you have a job. He said, job? I own this company. Owns the company. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Listen, you got this thing started uh-huh. right on the eve of some dark times for our community and our country. Mm-hmm. The recession was about to kick in. Jobs mm-hmm. were going to be lost. Since then, have you seen more people come to your ministry because they're out of work? You know, in other words, have, people, have more people fallen on hard times in recent years? You know, Brad, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a roller coaster. A lot of uh, homeless that come to Augusta are transits. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see, we've seen an influx uh, from North Carolina hurricane, from Florida hurricane. We really have an influx in our city right now. Um, and they're building, you know, communities under bridges and wherever they can go in the city. So it's up and it's down. Um, I think we've had a greater impact on the down set and the inner city downtown area as much with the homeless as we have um, the poor communities. Mm-hmm. Um, because communities as, you know, East Boundary, um, we have people come from on buses from, from Dean's Bridge, from, of course, Harrisburg. And so half of our population today is homeless, half of it is inner city poor. Mm-hmm. And they, they have came and just adopted a church, at, made the bridge ministry their church. They feel comfortable there. Um, but again, you know, it, it's, it's never the same. You never know what to expect. Roger, what's your advice to somebody who sees somebody on the side of the road holding a sign saying they need help? What should we do? Well, Brad, I think check your heart Mm -hmm. because your heart usually speaks louder than your head. And um, a lot of the, some of the people that are on the street corners holding signs truly are wanting to get out of town, get home. They want help. And then there's those ones that are just working the system. Sure. And so I would just say, check your heart. Um, and you can tell a little bit, is this real or is this not? If you hand someone money, um, they're gonna, if, if they're right, they're going to be so thankful. And if they're not, they will take it and, and walk away. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the humble and the, and the real needy, um, they're, they're pretty easy to pick out. I mean, they will... They will make eye contact with you, and they will, they will speak to you directly. We're kind of like the guy that's kind of off course, is not going to probably make eye contact, does not want to talk to you. Uh, he just wants his next fix. Now, I've seen both. That's well said. Right. I've seen both of those types you described. Uh-huh. Well, this is our giving episode. What, what, do you, what do you need from our viewers? I know you've seen a ton of support <clears throat> since you got started, but how can we help you make the bridge ministry better? Well, Brad, I want to thank News Channel 6 and giving your best partners first because mm-hmm. you guys are, are collecting toys for our Christmas outreach on December the 22nd. But as any ministry, when we became a nonprofit incorporation, I had to have a secretary. Um, I had to take responsibility of insurances and all kinds of things behind the scenes and payrolls that I'd never done before. Mm-hmm. A lot of things that has transpired over the last two and a half years. Uh, so, of course, as any ministry, we need finance. Um, and on the other hand, uh, we, on December the 1st, all next year, all the way to Thanksgiving 19, we're there every Saturday, and we need volunteers. Mm. And we need volunteers that can come with groups and would call us in advance and let us know that they're coming. Because we, it takes about 40 volunteers on site every Saturday uh, to be able to complete what we need. We have 25 to 30 kids every Saturday. We have a section for the kids. Uh, the feeding part takes about 10 or 12 uh, volunteers on site just to do that mm-hmm. and you know when we're doing regular outreaches like not Thanksgiving or not Christmas but a regular outreach a six-year-old can come down and hand some a homeless person a, a drink or a dessert right. or a plate of food and it inspires the inner city homeless and the poor especially the homeless you know they've lost their families and and Brad a lot of people don't realize it but in the condition they're in sometimes making eye contact shaking their hand and speaking a kind word just makes a huge difference in their life. Mm. Because if you look at it the way that we see our relationship with God, those are the things that we want. 
We want to hear his voice. We want him to touch us, right? We, we, Absolutely. We want the same things that they want. And if we can give it to them in the natural, it's easier for them to receive it in the spiritual realm. Pastor Roger Gardner, thank you for helping our homeless, our inner city, our poor. We appreciate everything the Bridge Ministry does. And I know that a lot of people are going to want to support you. Thank you so much, Brad. Absolutely. If you can help, you heard the pastor mention it, time, resources, they will take anything. You can get in touch with the Bridge Ministry of the CSRA. There's their website, there's their address, and there is their phone number. Think about them, won't you, prayerfully as you consider your giving both now and year round. When we come